Now let's make an example of the first method. We say that the first thing we do is to take our member here and draw the free body diagram. So we have a reaction here dy at c we'll have a reaction cy also supported by a roller at b we'll also have a reaction by supported by a roll at a there it has a pin support so there's the y and there's also the the x we still have our distributed loading on top here of 30 kilonewtons per minute. Now, now that we have our free body diagram, we can figure out how many unknown forces are there. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. So our number of forces is five. Now the number of equations is found by three n and three n n is the number of parts we have one part here so we multiply by one so we have three equations now we notice that our number of unknown forces is greater than the number of equilibrium equations so our structure is statically indeterminate now we have to find the degree of in indeterminacy where three minus three n that is 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. So it is indeterminate to the second degree, which means that we have two extra forces for statical stability. So we are going to declare two supports or support reactions as our redundant. In this example, I'm going to choose B and C. Remember that when you do this, you want it that your structure, it still becomes determinate, but it's still stable. So if I take off B and C, it will still have A and D to hold it up in place. But my choice is arbitrary. So if you feel like you want to take off these two and these two will be enough to still hold it um, for it to be no rotation or anything like that, then you can do that. So I'm going to choose the ones in the middle because I feel like they are the safest. So if I remove the redundant, what do I have? So now I will have AX and I will have AY and I will also have DY at the end. So here I will no longer have any force. But because of my distributed load, it will cause deflection here. So now, if we compare the original structure, the deflection was going to be something like, something like this, because of the distributed load and the support reactions will be holding this in place. Now that I do not have the support reaction in the middle, my deflection will be something like something like this. Now I need to note the deflection at each support where I removed a redundance. At B, there will be deflection here of delta B O. Now at C here, there will be a deflection of delta C O. Now I'm using C O to denote that it's from the original loading. So deflection at B from original loading, deflection of C from original loading. Now, after I do that, this is what we call our primary starch now our primary structure is the structure where we remove our redundance and now we have a determinate structure but that is still in place so now to evaluate the effect of each redundancy we are going to introduce a unit 
force at each of the redundant at each of the redundant now i will have my a y here and i will have my a x i will have my d y here now if i introduce a unit force at b I only introduce it at B and then I will evaluate another free body diagram where my unit force is at C. So this redundance, I eval evaluate them individual. If I had three, I would draw a third um, free body diagram and then see what a unit force will do at that po third point so now let's see if i put one here a unit load here how would it deflect so it will be something like something like that and down here because of the unit loaded c it will defect something like something like this so here at b will now have deflection at b because of the force at b and again at c here i will have deflection at c because of the load at b because the load is at b in this case now in the last case i will have deflection at b my deflection here deflection of b because of the force at c and here at c i will have deflection at c because of the force at c so that's how you draw your free body diagrams now i can start computing my compatibility equations we know that we want the deflection here at c to be zero because this redundance the redundant force will push back this deflection to zero even here at b the redundant will push the deflection at b back to zero so this deflection and this deflection and this deflection must add up to zero so how do i write it down so what i'm going to say is that for b i will have my if i take up as positive now b the deflection goes downward so it will be negative delta b because of original loading and we'll have a positive deflection bb here because it's it is going upwards delta b b and i will also have delta bc delta bc because it's going upward it is positive remember it must be equal to zero because we want this deflection here to be zero now to simplify this i will have what is delta bo now delta bo is just delta bo because of deflection original loading now delta bb here will be delta bb will be given by f b b times b y because remember we say deflection at b because of the force at b plus delta bc here delta bc is deflection at bc because of the force at c so c y all equal to zero now this is my first compatibility equation now because i have two redundants i need two compatibility equations what is the other one the other one comes from redundant c so i will have delta co it will be negative delta co because it is downwards and you say up is positive plus delta cb going upwards and delta 
cc all equal to zero all these deltas when you add them up they might just give you zero because we don't want any deflection here no settlement now to simplify here i have delta co plus what is delta cb delta cb is given by f cb b y because it is deflection at c because of force at b y plus delta cc is deflection at c because of the force at c now this is my second compatibility equation now i have two redundants i have two compatibility equations so now i can calculate my redundant now what is delta bo now if you look here at delta bo and delta co they are equal they are experiencing the same force and at equal distances so delta bo will be equal to delta co this will not always be the case so make sure that you calculate each one now because i have a beam with a distributed load acting on it i will go to my beam deflections and then i will take i will take this one now when i substitute into this i will substitute my distributed load which is 30 my x now my x for bo will be six meters so it will go to six meters and then my l will be uh, 18 it will give me 35640 over ei fbb and fcc they have the same type of load acting on them at equal distances so they'll also be equal now it is a beam with a load acting on it so when I look at my beam deflections, I will take P It will give me 96 over EI Now to find FBC and FCB I can use Maxwell's law or I can still use um, these forces uh these beam deflections and it will give me 84 over ei now now that i have everything i need i go back to my compatibility equations and i substitute let's start with one now for the first one i have delta bo is negative 35640 over ei plus fbb FBB is 96 over EI times BY plus FBC is also 90. Um, FBC is 84 over EI times CY. Then I go to number two, my compatibility equation number two, and I substitute here. So my delta co it will be 35 6 40 over ei plus fcb fcb is 84 over ei times by plus fcc fcc is 96 over ei times c y now if i use simultaneous equations to solve this i can find that my bc my by is equal to 198 kilo newtons my cy is also 198 kilo newtons all you have to do is solve using simultaneous equations now i now know my redundance by 198 cy they are both 198 so this is 198 and this is 198 to solve for the 
rest of the unknowns i can use my equation of equilibria if i take right as positive the sum of forces in x is equal to zero ax is the only one acting in that direction so ax will be equal to zero now if i take moment about d now say that anti-clockwise is positive about d what are all the moments there's no moment at d so there will be a moment at c but about d that moment will cause an clockwise and we say anti-clockwise is positive so it will be negative cy and cy is acting at six meters now by is also and uh, clockwise so negative by acting at 12 meters and a y negative also because it causes clockwise rotation it is acting at 18 meters they must all be oh and i have the distributed load of 30 kilo newtons per meter so it causes anti-clockwise rotation about d so it will be positive so my distributed load it acts at 8.5 they must all be equal to zero also going upward taking upward as positive the sum of the forces in y must be equal to zero what are the forces in y you'll have a y it's positive because it goes up you'll have b y it's positive because it goes up plus c y it's positive because it goes up plus d y it's positive because it goes up minus my distributed load of 30 times 18 it's negative because it acts downwards equal to zero again if you use simultaneous equations here you will find the unknowns of ay and dy now ay is equal to 72 and dy is equal to 72.